All right, hello everybody. Thank you everybody who's tuning in. Have a really uh, cool, fun activity planned for today. So if you wanna come follow along with our activity, all you need is one or two pieces of paper, a marker that you can use, and we're just gonna be learning some different fonts of writing the alphabet. So a nice way to practice how we do our writing, how we do our alphabet, and we have a special guest here. We have John the Barber. So John, John uh, owns and operates his own barber shop, and he's also an artist. And he's been kind enough to give us some of his knowledge and his time and his skills with this video. All right, so everyone at home can follow along, practice some cool ways, some fun ways of writing the alphabet. John's going to show us some different things. And let me just get full screen on John. All right. All right, John, all you. All right. So we're going to start with a pretty basic font. It's not too far off from the regular alphabet font that we use every day. And um, so using a marker would probably be the best because you can get different widths. So like if I press hard and then I press light, it's going to give me a different width. So we like to do that uh, while we do our letters. It's gonna add a little bit of a flow to it. So I'm gonna do capitals and lowercase with this font. It's just a basic font. So I'm gonna start with the A. And then the lowercase. And you can see how like pressing harder or lighter gives it a little bit of a different kind of flow to it. And you see how it's not that far off from the regular style of the alphabet. So we're going to start, now we're going to do a B. Here, let's start with a, press a little harder towards the top and then just glide down and give it a little bit of a taper at the bottom. And then we're going to come from the top and just, we're going to swoop in like this. And then we're going to, so a lot like a regular B. Here, maybe we can press a little bit harder towards the top. There we go. And then I'm gonna do a lowercase b, which is pretty much nothing too fancy. And then now the C's, and a lot of, a lot of other letters have what's called the serif. So if you ever see a font that's called sans serif, that means it's without a serif. Sans means without, serif is this thing right here. That's a serif. So, and then the lowercase c is gonna be kind of the same. Throw a serif on there. And it adds a little bit of a cool style to it. Now we're gonna do a D. And that one's actually pretty simple. It's just a line and then an a nice little rounded swoop. And then the same thing with this, you can actually just, pretty much like the regular day. There's not much you can do with that. All right. And then the E's are cool to do because you can do E's in a lot of different ways. But for the basic E, we're going to go with uh, sort of like an L. Here, let me do that again. Sort of like an L, like that. And then and I like to do the middle line closer to the top it adds a very cool like look to it and then the lowercase c mm, you can do this a bunch of different ways but i like to keep the top wider and then the bottom close so here we got so far and the key is to make all the letters match so you don't want to do like an e this way but then do like an f all like crazy fancy and stuff like you don't want to although that's a really cool f if you're doing it all in one in one um thing you want it to all kind of match so the f can go something like this and since we were close to the top over here with this, we can be close to the top over here with this second line. And that's how all the fonts are gonna match. Um, 
a lowercase f could just be like that right here. Let's try that one more time. I want I want to get a little bit of like a taper on the bottom. Oh. I want to get like a little bit of a taper on the bottom, just like that. There's a lowercase f. Sometimes you can even add a serif to the f's and e's. So if you wanted to, you could add a little serif to that. Makes it look pretty cool. Even the uppercase ones you could, if you wanted to. Uh, depending on the kind of E or F. All right. So there we got the first row of letters. Now G's I find to be kind of tricky, but we can make it look kind of cool by sort of doing like a C at first with a serif on top like that, but then adding almost like an arrow point with like a long streak down. So that looks pretty cool, right? And then the lowercase g, we can do pretty much how we would do, eh, let's try it one more time. Start with a little circle and then come down and do a point like that. Now the h's are pretty easy. A lot like a regular h. We can do two lines that are sort of one shorter, one longer like that. And then remember, we're keeping everything pretty similar. So remember how the E, the line was up towards the top. And with the H, we can put the line also towards the top like that. We want everything to be consistent. Lowercase H, whoops. Pretty similar to a regular lowercase H. And the difference between doing this with a pencil and a marker is that we're going to get these different thicknesses in the line, which makes it have a little bit more style to it. Eyes are a lot of fun. It's a lot like a regular eye, except you might want to give it a little bit of like a lean to it. So we'll start towards the top, start towards the top and just swoop it in. And then same thing with the bottom, going in upwards motion like that, like that. There we go. You can do different things with the lowercase i. You can add an x on top to give it a little bit of a flare. Or you could also do a circle. Or you can just do a regular dot, whatever works for you. J's. Same thing with the i. We want it to have a little bit of a lean to it and kind of come up on a slant. And you could do the lowercase j in multiple different ways. You can do it like, um, yeah, I'm not very good at the lowercase j's. Um, do the same thing, like you can put like a little bit of a, of like a, you could do an X on top, or you could do a circle. Whatever works for you. Okay. Um, J, J, K. So K's are actually a lot of fun too. Do one line that swoops down. And then we can do another line that comes across. And then another line that swoops down like that. And there you go. There's a K. Lowercase k is pretty much the same thing. Um, there's other ways you can do k, though. You can start with the outside lines like that and then just connect them into the middle like this. That's another way to do a k. All right. But the lowercase k, you want it to kind of look a little bit more like this right here. L's could be tricky. You can do like that, just or or um, what I like to do. Wait, hold on. Swoop it down a little bit, like that. Then you got a pretty funky L. Lowercase L's, same as regular font, just one line. All right, now the M's are really cool. 
I like to add a little bit of a flair to the M's a lot. Um, so I start with like sort of like an arrow shape, and then I go up, and then I come down like that. It's almost like an N and then a seven. And then the regular, the, the lowercase, I mean. Hold on. We want this to taper off towards the bottom like that. I basically did one line and then two little sevens right after it. So you can see right there how that looks. M's are a lot of fun. You can make them look really cool. An N is going to be very similar to the M. So we're going to do one line. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you. One line that tapers towards the bottom. And I also like to make it look pretty pretty strange but by doing something like that. I know it looks kind of weird, but that's one of the ways to do an N. Or you can do that little piece on the bottom like that. Same thing with the lowercase m. Little line and then a seven, sort of like a rounded seven. O's are pretty simple, as you can imagine. They're just circles. And if they're not perfect, that's actually what makes them look cool. So you could also add little, um, like a line in it or something like that, or like an X in it, you know. You can get creative. Um, P's are really cool. You can make them look really cool. Start with it thicker towards the top, press a little bit harder with your marker and then just swoop down like that. Start a little thicker towards the top with this, the round part and just swoop it in like that. There's a capital P. And then same thing with the lowercase. Basically a line and then a circle. Cues are really cool. They're just like the uh, circle, as you can imagine, except we can add this little zigzag right here to give it a really cool kind of look to it. Same thing with the lowercase. Do a little circle and then a little bit of a zigzag, just like that. You can see how it looks so far. All of our letters. Oh, what happened to our X in here? All right, you're not gonna have a problem with that on your papers. Once you put the uh, line down, it's gonna stay. R's, I love doing R's. They're a lot of fun. Start with a line like that. And then a little swoop. And then just, boom, just like that. A lot, um, same thing as with the N, we're going to do a line and then sort of like a seven. So that's the lowercase r. S's are also very fun because you can just doodle S's and R's and those kind of letters are really fun because they have a lot of cool lines and stuff like that. This is one of the other letters that's gonna have a serif. So we can actually start with uh, sort of like a squiggle like this, All right? And then I like to do the tops, I like to do the top of the S actually bigger than the bottom of the S, which I mean, what I mean by that is, I like to make the bottom of the S a little bit smaller than the top and then throw a serif on there just like that and as you can imagine the lowercase s is pretty much the same cool t's very very simple a line there and a line towards the top just like that 
Um, lowercase t's. Let's try that one more time. So if you can imagine a T is sort of like a J, except backwards. If you ever put a line on the bottom of a T, it's going to go to the right, as opposed to the J, which goes to the left. So there's a lowercase T. U's could be pretty tricky, but um, I'm going to show you the difference between doing a U and a V. So a U, Let's get sort of like an L shape almost, and then just a little boom line like that. There you go, pretty simple uppercase U. Um, and then a lowercase, you would wanna sort of do the same thing, just a little bit smaller. The Vs are gonna be pretty similar to the U, except backwards. So we're gonna do a line on one side, and then this, the round part is gonna go on the right side, just like that. And it's pretty strange how close they look, but you can tell that one's a U and one's a V. So we're gonna do the same thing. As you can imagine, the lowercase V is gonna look similar to the, the capital V. The W, we can do it sort of the same way we did the, um, we do it sort of the same way we did the capital M, just upside down, which what I like to do is I like to do a V and then just like that. A V and then a flat bottom and then swoop up just like that. And you can imagine that the lowercase W is gonna be very similar. But they look pretty cool, right? All right, and the X. X's are pretty simple as well. Except you can do a couple of things to make an X look a little bit cooler. So you can actually do a line like that. And then a line through like that, if you wanted to. Um, another thing that I like to do is I'll, I'll do that sort of line on both sides. So I'll do it like that. Oh gosh, that looks like a mess. Like that, and then like that. Now, like, you want the you want the bottom line to be very long compared to that. There we go, just like that. There we go. It takes some getting used to as far as like letting your hands just move around and uh, get it done, you know, in the, in the, um, it just takes a lot of practice to just, you know, do it freely, freehand. Um, sometimes I like to do the X's where the crosses happen really close towards the top. If I can just show you guys real quick. So here's a lowercase. And then, so the cross is higher towards the top and then the bottom is actually um, longer. Another way you can do it is the upside down version of this, which is a cross and then something like that. All right, now we need another box for the Y and Z. So let's add it down here. I'm gonna go right ahead and use my spray paint to add a little bit of what, oh, that's not white. Oh wait, actually. Mm. Here we go make the canvas just slightly bigger. Let's make it just slightly bigger. There we go. We can add the X and 
of the Y and Z right over here. Boom, cool. All right, so that works better than what I was gonna do before. So the Y, start with a line, make sort of like an L shape, and then come down and swoop over that way. An L and then a J, basically. That's kind of what it looks like. And as you can imagine, the lowercase can be very similar to that. Just like that. And then the Z, Z's are a lot of fun. Z's have serifs on it. Um, but as you can imagine, we could just kind of zigzag our way with the Z. Although Z is very similar. There's a lot of different ways you can do these letters. And uh, that's pretty much it. Those are the more simpler kind of letters and styles. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's very cool. And and here's how mine mine came out. If you want to take a look. I was that was pretty cool. Along. I like how you put an asterisk in the, uh, oh, very creative. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I made a line and then uh, and then you made the X and I wanted to do the X also. <laughs> so I, I did the X too. Um, but very cool. Very cool. I, I like it. And, you know, anybody who's following along at home, it's just a, a fun way to practice some different forms of doing the alphabet and, and those different fonts. And not only is it, you know, artistic expression to practice drawing, but also just, you know, control of the pencil, how we use the pencil, um, make the different letters, the different styles. It's very awesome. All right. Yeah, so if you take the, the letters and then you can, and now you can add them all together. So I'm going to add, I'm going to write, oh, whoops. I'm going to make Dan. Or do your name with the letters, Dan? Yeah, sure, sure. Right. <laughs> I won't say no to that. So, oh man, D, A, N, there you go. <laughs> nice. You when you put them together. Awesome. And sometimes you can throw a little uh, exclamation mark at the end <laughs> and a star. <laughs> oh gosh, I just realized that I used the wrong... Oh, there we go. All right. That's it. All right. Awesome. All right. And then, so, John, so that's our uppercase, lowercase. Did you have one more font that was a little bit different? We, we don't have to do uppercase and lowercase. But okay. Just to, to quickly um, kind of try that, that second one that, that we were talking about that's a, a little bit different. This, is, this one is more, you were saying, like the, the basic font, right? Yeah, what we just did is a little more of a basic font. Which still looks really awesome, I think. But uh, I would love to, if you still want to want to give me one more font, I would love it. Sure. All right. So um, this is one of the fonts that I like to use a lot. And uh, it just adds a little bit more flair. This It's a little bit less legible. And it's obviously not the way you would write regular letters when you're writing in school and things like that. But it's a, just a, an artistic way, cool way to kind of make things a little bit different. So I'm gonna use the same thing with my marker. And I'm just uh, making sure that my size is the right size. That'll work. Okay. My A is gonna go like this, line straight down. And then sort of like a seven almost. And remember, what I, remember what I said, I kind of like it to be longer, on one side than the other side 
because it just adds a little bit of like a lean to it and it looks kind of cool. All right, so that's my A. And we're gonna keep all of the letters kind of matching this font. So that if we piece them all together, they can all go together, which means that my B is gonna be very similar. Um, so two different characteristics of this font. Flat on top, pointy on the bottom, as you can see. And they match. They look like they go together. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing with all the letters. They're gonna have flat top and point on the bottom. And I like to trail them off towards the end. And I also like to add serifs to these, which is just a straight line up. There's a C, D's, straight line on the top. I like to bring it out in this direction a little bit on a slant. Little line here, and then boom, point. There you got yourself a D. And this is important because you don't want to get it confused with the O, which is going to look pretty similar to that. All right, the E. Very similar to the last C that we did, except this is gonna be pointy on the bottom. Let me do that one more time. Pointy on the bottom, flat on top. I want the, I want the two lines to kind of like meet. Little serif there and then There we go. And remember, we're keeping the second line, the middle line here, closer to the top, just like we were in the other one. And this is how we're gonna make it look consistent. The F is very similar to the E, except without the bottom, obviously. But see now, they look like they can go together. All these letters look like they match and they go together. E, F, G's could be a little tricky, like I said in the last one. But it's basically the C, just with an arrow at the end. And the same thing with the H's. I like to keep the top line. I like to keep the middle line close to the top like that. Now the I, I like to get a little bit fancy with. I like to add a little arrow towards the bottom like that so it can stay in line with it being pointy on the bottom, flat on top. And I also like to throw an X towards the top. So it's sort of like a mix of a, a capital and lowercase i. My J's, now this is gonna get kind of tricky. The J is gonna have a line, a short line like, well, let's start with a shorter line than that. A short line like that, and then it's gonna to come to the right and then point down like that and swing up. Trail off towards the end and then we're gonna add an X on top. This is gonna count as our I. All right, the K is very similar to that K that I showed you guys. Um, let me show you guys again. So do the first line, do this line over here, do a line over there, make sure that connects, and then just like that. And sometimes I like to keep it a little bit wider, hold on. I like to swoop it down a little more. There we go. And sometimes I like to throw a little line on the inside. I don't know why, I just think it looks cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Oh boy. There we go. Now the L, remember we wanna keep the bottom a point. So we could do that. Very similar to the last L, or we could do something like that, where it's pointy on the bottom. M. 
similar to the last n. I just like to exaggerate a little bit more. N. Similar to the last one. Or actually, since we're doing this with the point, make it a little bit more of a point, just like that. Remember, flat on top, point on the bottom. This is the way everything can stay consistent. Now the O's are really cool. Do a line here, line here, flat on top, point on the bottom, and then throw a line in there like that. All right, and you can see how close the D and the O could look, which is why we add these little bits towards the end of the D. And we also offset the point towards the right to make sure it looks more like a D than an O. All right, and then the P, we're gonna keep, whoop. We're gonna keep the line flat on top. And we're also just like the E, Oh boy, let me do this one more time. Just like the E, we're keeping that middle line very high. This way it can stay consistent with the other letters. See how the E, the line's closer to the top? The P, this line's gonna be closer to the top, just like the H, the line is closer to the top, just like the B and the A, all those lines are closer to the top. That's how we keep it consistent, we can add different letters to different words. Q, very, very, very similar to the O, except obviously with, let's just say a check, backwards check. All right. The R, a lot like the P or the B, except with the line that comes out, and then a line that drops down like that. And sometimes I'll even throw that little line in there like that. S's could be very tricky. It's flat on top. And we're gonna make this look almost like a five. And we're gonna throw a serif on there. That's how we know it's not a five, because we throw a serif on there. T's could be very tricky. It's pretty much a backwards J, like I said before, except this has a line on top in, instead of a, hold on, let me show you guys that one more time. This is gonna have a line on top in, instead of an X. So look, just like the J that we did, except backwards. And it's gonna have a line on top. With the bottom, I have a point. U. can add little flares to it or whatever. Um, it's kind of where it gets a little tricky because the U and the V could look very similar. Um, nah, let's go with this. It's a lot of practice and a lot of, you know what actually? There we go. The U and the V kind of look a lot alike. You're gonna to need to rely on context when you're putting these into uh, words. Um, all right. W, a lot like the upside, a lot like the M, but upside down, except we're going to have a point here. Well, let's try it one more time. There we go. And then the X. Then the Y, we're going to do a 
put that and then a Z flat on top, pointing on the bottom. Throw a serif on there, boom, we got a Z. See, it's a very blocky kind of font, but there you have it. Woo. That's awesome. That's very, very awesome. And here's how mine came out in, in that font. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. Thank you. Thank Put you. them together. Hold on, let me uh, make my lines a little bit wider. Put them together. There you go. Quotes. Star. That is awesome. <laughs> awesome. You can throw a little crowd in there if you want. <laughs> Boom. Awesome. I love it. That's nice. Very, very nice. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for your time, for your knowledge, for your skills. And, you know, just for anybody who's, who's following along, who's watching along with this video and practicing and learning, um, you know, we're not trying to encourage any kind of bad use of this, just, you know, just an artistic expression um, of, of just drawing and just a different style to use this font. Um, and, you know, just a different way to practice handwriting and, and how we use our pencil. There's a lot of different ways we can use our pencil. So I want to thank John again. And I think John also actually does custom drawings. So if anybody does want to get in touch with John, either for, you know, one-on-one -on -one training or practice or for John to do any kind of custom pieces, I know he has done some really awesome ones before. You know, you can feel free to reach out to me. I do have my um, email address in the about of the YouTube channel, and it's Dan the OT Man One at gmail.com. So you know you can follow along with with the the videos and have some fun learning for yourself. Or if you want to reach out, you know please feel free to reach out, and uh, and you could definitely get in touch. All right, John, awesome man, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Thank you.